begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Can I start out this broadcast by asking you a question? Are you one of those whosoever's? I was just thinking about that today, my friend. I am glad that I am one of those whosoever's. When people have counted me out, when they called me an outcast, when they didn't want to have nothing else to do with me, when, when the world rejected me, Jesus reached out, just as the prodigal son did when the son came back home. The father had his arms out, waiting for his son to come back home. My God, isn't that good news today? That God loves you. I, and, and let me say this, I'm not just saying that, I know this. Because one thing I love about God, is that he didn't he wasn't all about talk and that when God said that he loved you he demonstrated it he proved it by sending his son and God we just give you the praise we thank you today thank you Holy Spirit for what you're gonna do on this broadcast Lord I pray you will touch your lives in a special way May your spirit reign, Lord, in our lives. And Lord, I pray, Lord, as I teach you on this today, that many people will become aware of the fact that we need to be more unified and we need to work together. For we are more powerful when we are connected. We are more powerful when we are together, not divided. I pray, Lord, that you will touch the hearts of your people, those that are watching today's show, Lord. That they will understand that we need each other to be the effective body of Christ that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Henry Harris. Thank you for watching today's episode. I have a really, really powerful teaching I would like to share with you today and I'm going to take my time. So today I want to talk about are we a dysfunctional body? Let's, re let's read verse 12 right quick. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. I believe right here that Paul is referring to the human body. Paul was also making a natural, or may I say a physical point, that you as a believer, you have one body, and your body has different parts, but each part of your body has different functions. The heart is not going to operate like the liver. The liver is not going to operate like the kidney. The kidney is not going to operate like the lungs. But it makes up one body. So you have one body. You have different parts of that one body. But each part of that body has different functions. Romans chapter 12 verse 4. Let's turn there right quick because uh, Romans 12, 4 t tells us about this. And um, Paul says, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So everything is not going to be a heart. Everything is not going to be lungs. Everything is not going to be kidneys. Everything is not going to be the hand. Everything is not going to be the ears or the eyes. They do not function the same. If we go back to Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, you notice the words, so also in Christ. I believe right here, Paul is beginning to start to make a spiritual point. 
He's already made a natural point that you have one body, many members, but each part has a different function. They don't all function the same. He says, so also in Christ. Verse 13 says, for by one spirit, we were all, can somebody say all? It didn't say us or them. It says we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, whether slaves or free, and all have been, can you say all again? This is important. And have all been made to drink into that one spirit. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 5 declares there is one Lord, there is one faith, and there is one baptism. The Bible says that we were all baptized into one body. We are all drinking from one spirit. We are all drinking from one cup. Now, if you notice, right there in verse 13, it says that we are drinking from one spirit. It never said a divided spirit. And today, sadly, it seems like we are drinking from different cups. We're not all drinking from that same cup. It doesn't matter if you're Jew, if you're Greek, if you're Baptist, if you're Lutheran, if you're Catholic. We're all drinking from that same cup. We were all baptized into what? One body. What was that body? That body was the body of Christ. Let's continue to read. Verse 14 says, For in fact the body is not one member, but many. The body is not just one member. The body could not even function if it was just one member. It just doesn't work that way. It's not really a body until every part of that body is functioning properly and working together. For I believe in my heart that the body of Christ is more powerful and more effective when we join hands with each other and when we work together, that's when we become more effective and more powerful. Verse 15. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not the eye, am I not of the body, is it not therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were a hearing, where would the smell be? Think about that. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the, where would the smell be? What is this trying to say? We need every part of the body. Even in the body of Christ, we need every part in the body of Christ. Even though we may not all function the same, we still need each other for the body of Christ to work effectively. We need each other. Now sometimes pride won't allow us to say that. But I have to say this today, that I need you to function properly. I need you. Why? Because you are a part of the body. We are part of one body. The body of Christ. Therefore, we need each other. You're not going to say, well, I don't need my hands or I don't need my ears. I don't need my eyes. You need those parts. It's just the same way in the body of Christ. You need each other. You're not going to look at your hand and say, well, I don't need you no more. The hand's not going to look at the feet and say, well, I don't need you no more. The feet is not going to look at the eyes and say, well, I don't need you no more. No. 
It doesn't work that way in the natural. I need every part of my body. It's the same way with the body of Christ. We can't be saying, oh, I don't need you. Or I can't fellowship with you. Or I can't associate myself with you. No. We are called to oneness. Oneness of spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's all one. It's all oneness. Working together. Drinking from that same cup. That's one thing I can truly say I admire about the early church. Is that they worked together. Acts chapter 2. The Bible talks about how they were all in one place on one accord. My prayer is that we get back to unity. Get back to oneness. That oneness of spirit. We must declare today, I need you. I need you. We cannot function properly if everyone is not doing their part. That's what causes the body to become dysfunctional. When you got some parts working and other parts not working, it's a dysfunctional body. Let's just be real. But we need every part of the body of Christ to work together in order to function properly. Everybody must be doing their part. And I've said this and I'll say it again. We are more effective and powerful when we work together. Psalms chapter 133, verse 1, a very familiar passage. I like to read it right quick. And it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in division. No. It says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to do, to well together in unity. That's what it's all about. It's all about unity. It's all about connecting. It's all about engaging. It's all about working together. That's what it's all about. And that's the way the body of Christ should be defined. But sadly, it's not. It seems like we are more against each other than we are for each other. Moving right along. Verses... 18. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, what would the body be? That is so, so very important. Now, that's a good question. If they were all one part, where would the body be? That's dysfunctional. How would I look if I was just the hand? How would I look if I was just the eye? How would I look if I was just the smelling or the ear? How would that look? It's not a body. We are not a body until we start working together. That's a very good question I think Paul asked. If they were all one part, where would, we, where would the body be? And this so reminds me of people that say, oh, I can do it all by myself. I don't need the church. I don't need the body of Christ. I can do it all by myself. It's just me. I'm sorry. You can't do it all by yourself. You need the body of Christ. It's all about fellowshipping with one another. That's what it's all about, fellowshipping with one another. We got some preachers that don't want to fellowship with other preachers because of doctrinal differences. We got this church competing against that church. We got this pastor trying to out-preach that one. We got this choir trying to out-sing the choir across the street. That's division. That's division. That's not unity. That's not drinking from that same cup, that one spirit. That's not being unified. There is no competition in the body of Christ. None whatsoever. But look at this. Listen to me, folks. But when we are divided and disconnected, that's exactly what it looks like. Just that one body part just floating around, doing your own thing. That's what it looks like. That's exactly what it looks like. Verse 20, 
says, but now indeed there are many members, but yet one body. Many members, but yet one body. Paul reassures us, yes, there are many parts of the body, but you are still one body. We're still operating under one body, and that is, again, the body of Christ. What are some ways that we can um, become dysfunctional? I named three, and I hope they are a blessing to you. Number one is disagreement. Ooh, that's a big one. I know I may get stones thrown at me, but I'm going to talk about this one because it's a big one. And I want you to listen to this very clearly. I believe disagreement is healthy. But we should never allow our differences in opinions to cause us to be divisive. We should never do that. I see it on Facebook all the time. I see it uh, by everywhere I go in the church world. You know, this idea that if I don't agree with you, I can't be connected with you, is not what the it's not what the body of Christ is about. This idea that you have to see it the way I see it is not what the body of Christ is about. It's not being unified. And it's okay to disagree with someone. It's not a sin to disagree with someone. It happens all the time. Just a few days ago, I had a um, young man that posted something that I didn't disagree with. He's my brother in Christ. You know what I just said? I said, I respectfully disagree, but guess what? I love you. You're still my brother in Christ. That's the type of attitude that we need. We don't have to agree with what everybody else says or what everybody else does. They are still your brother and sister in Christ, even in disagreement. But here's the problem. We have allowed disagreement to cause disunity. We have. Because if a person don't agree with you, we get nasty sometimes. We get mean-spirited sometimes. If they don't see it the way we see it, we get frustrated at them. We get really mad. I'm talking about grace folks. I've been there. I've done it myself. I'm just going to be honest. Not even realizing that even in disagreement, they are still your brother and sister in Christ. It's just like any normal family. You don't always agree with everything your brothers and sisters do in the natural. At the end of the day, they're still your brothers. That still doesn't disqualify them being your relatives because you don't agree with them. It's the same way in the body of Christ. I may not see it the way you see it. I may not always agree with you, but at the end of the day, we're still family. We're still part of one body. You're still my brother. You're still my sister in Christ. That's the way it's supposed to operate. So a lot of people say, well, we shouldn't disagree. I disagree with that. It's okay to disagree. But sometimes many of us just need to disagree and move on. Please, folks, listen to me really good. Please don't allow a disagreement to cause disunity. Because I've seen it happen. I've seen relationships destroyed over disagreement. I've seen the body of Christ almost destroyed over disagreement. Number two, disfellowship. Sadly, many believers and pastors don't fellowship for many reasons. But when we refuse to fellowship with other believers, we are no different than that one body part trying to operate without the full body. When we refuse to fellowship, when you're always, when you're off all by yourself, you're just like what Paul just said. You're just like that one body part that's trying to function and operate without the full body. You won't survive too long. You need every part of your body to survive. I need you to survive. How many of y'all know that song? I need you to survive. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. I love that song. It's true. I need you to survive. We need each other to survive. So don't allow this fellowship to cause us to become dysfunctional or to cause us to become divided. 
Fellowship is healthy. You need to be engaged and connected to a body of believers. Those that believe like you. And I'm not talking about a church setting. I'm just talking about where other believers are gathered. The Bible says if two or three uh, are gathered together in his name, the Bible says that there am I in the midst. God is there. This whole idea that you got to be in a church building is absurd. You don't. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. The, body, the church shouldn't be defined as a building. It's just a place where people just meet. And there's nothing wrong going to church. But don't judge people that don't go to church. I don't judge people that don't go to church. I know a lot of people that don't go to church. They rather meet in homes or they'll meet with a couple of people and have Bible study. There's nothing wrong with that. But fellowship with other believers, it, what it does is it builds you up. It edifies you because you can feed off each other spiritually. Number three. We are not all on the same journey. And this is going to be a real good one. We're not all on the same journey. We can't become nasty to folks who don't agree or see things the way we do. They may not see it the way you do, but he or she is still a part of the body. We are still a part of the same family. And here's what it comes down to. We have to learn how to respect each other's journey. Why? Because we're all growing. That's the thing I love about my journey. You don't have to agree with it. That's the thing I love about your journey. I don't have to agree with yours. But guess what? I still love you. I respect your journey. And we see this all the time. Everywhere we go, we see it. We get mad at people because they didn't see it the way I saw it. I can't believe he didn't see it the way I did. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that they didn't see it the way you saw it. They weren't supposed to. God deals with different people in different ways. That's one thing I love about the body of Christ. I love learning. And if I hear something that I think is kind of off the wall, I'll research it. I'll look into it. Why? Because I'm growing. I'm learning. I like to learn new things from people. Hopefully you're learning things from me. But we all need to do that. We need to learn how to respect each other's journey. We're all on that same path. We're all on that same road. We all may have a different perspective on things or a different interpretation on things. Let us learn how to respect each other's journey. Everybody don't see it the way you do. Everybody's not on the same journey as you are on. It's okay to see things differently than other people. We were not wired to see everything through the same lens. Let's go back to the scriptures. Let's read verse 21. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker or necessary. Those, in other words, it's saying those who are feeble and may be weak are sometimes those who need you the most. That's why every part of the body is important. Everybody is not, and I'm going to say this very clearly, everybody is not on the same level as you. There may be some people a part of the body that may be weaker than you are. There may be some people that are stronger than you are. Maybe in certain areas they may be weak. Maybe you can help them out. Maybe you can carry their burdens. Maybe you can lend a helping hand to them. But just because they're weak in a certain area don't mean that they're not a part of the body. It doesn't mean that they're not important. We need those people too to be connected to. You know, a while back, I had a Baptist preacher friend of mine. He told me, he says, Brother Henry, we are on the same team. How true is that? We are on the same team. You know, it'd be just like, I'm just using this for example. It'd be like the Dallas Cowboys and the Falcons, just for an example. Let's say they were out there on the football field, and all of a sudden, the Dallas Cowboys start fighting amongst themselves. Guess what? They're going to be defeated. What are you trying to say, Brother Henry? I'm glad you asked. What I'm trying to say is, 
is that when we fight amongst ourselves, we set ourselves up for defeat and for failure. We cannot be fighting amongst ourselves. Why? Because it's crazy. It's nonsense. We are on the same team. We should be working together, not fighting against each other. Verse 25 says that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. In other words, it's saying there should be no division in the body of Christ. No division whatsoever. That's what Paul said. Paul said there should be no division in the body of Christ. But sadly, I think we are. We can never agree on anything. We're always debating and tearing each other down. Now, is there anything wrong with debating? No, I believe in healthy debate. I don't debate much, but I believe you can debate as far as trying to discover the truth of God's word. But I've also thought about that we disagree on so much. I thought to myself, what does the body of Christ agree on? Can we agree that we are the righteousness of God? Can we agree that we are a joint heir with Christ? Can we agree that I've been purchased through the blood of the Lamb? Can we agree that Jesus did come to the earth and died on the cross for our sins? Can we agree that he rose from the dead and destroyed the works of the devil? Can we agree that we are more effective when we join hands and when we work together? Can we agree on that? Can we agree on that today? Well, I disagree. I disagree. What do we agree on? What do we agree on? This causes the body of Christ to look dysfunctional. And it will cause us to become dysfunctional. Uh, let's turn on let's turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11 says, Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Paul says, comfort one another, edify one another as you are doing. The mission is of each believer today, we should be edifying and comforting each other just as we are doing. Just as I am doing now. I am comforting you. I am edifying you. Paul was real big on edification. You see it throughout all the books. You see it throughout all the chapters that he wrote and books that he wrote. Paul would say, build, one, build each other up. Paul would say stuff like, edify one another. Comfort each other with these words. Build each other up. Why do you keep talking about that? Why do you put so much emphasis on edification? Because it's a part of the body of Christ. That's what the body of Christ do. And anything opposite to that, we shouldn't listen to. We shouldn't be no part of. Because all it does is it births divisiveness. Let's read verse 26 and 27. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. You are the body of Christ. God calls us once again to oneness. And he calls us to work together. We need each other. If you see your brother or sister who is weak and need help, we should help them. Why? Because that's what the body of Christ would do. So if you didn't learn anything today from today's teaching, I hope you learned that we are one body. We may have different parts. We may not see everything the same, but you are still my family. We may not agree on everything, but you're still part of the body. And we are more effective when we work together. Are we a dysfunctional body? I'll let you determine that.